This weekend, we talked to Elio Beltrao, the well-known Austro-Libertarian entrepreneur, businessman, and founder of Mises Brazil. We talked crony capitalism and the upcoming World Cup soccer event, and why the Liberty Movement is like a soccer team, complete with goalkeepers, midfielders, forward strikers, and even coaches. Welcome to Mises Weekends. I'm Jeff Dice, and we're very happy this weekend to be speaking with Elio Beltrao from Brazil. Elio, how are you? Great, Jeff. Uh, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm excellent. So, Elio is well known, I think, really almost worldwide in the libertarian movement, but I'm going to just give a little bit of background. Um, he is, of course, the founder of Mises Brazil. He's also a, uh, a fund manager, an entrepreneur, both in uh, the financial and ideological sense. And, and he's someone I had the opportunity to meet a couple of years back at Hans Hermann Hoppe's Property and Freedom Society conference in Bodrum, Turkey. So we know each other a bit. But uh, your reputation precedes you, and uh, it's it's great to to talk to you again. And you know, I, I want to get right into this because this is an unbelievable time for Brazil. And I'd like some of your thoughts on how uh, the liberty movement in Brazil and, and South America more generally sort of ties into this. Uh, you know, the World Cup is what a week away right now, um, and I, it's just a, it's interesting how how aware. The uh, you know folks have become with these events in terms of pointing out the crony capitalism that can often be involved, and uh, you know we're we're hearing from sort of the left uh, uh, anarchist side in terms of the black block block protesters who have promised to disrupt things. But I'm just wondering, uh, is there also a an awakening sort of uh, libertarian sentiment in Brazil uh, at all involved in the opposition, as such as it is to the World Cup? Uh, yes, it's actually a very confusing time, I think, for Brazilians, because, of course, you know, Brazil is the country of football. And I'm going to use football instead of soccer. You understand that. Uh, so it's it's the tendency here is to conflate this um, maybe I should call neurosis of Brazilians uh, with football and uh you know, the past uh, sentiment that we have of the mongrel dog complex uh, before we, you know, were a smaller country on the periphery. Uh, and we still have that sense of a neurosis. Uh, and we are conflating this completely uh, with the uh, perceptions about the uh, current political situation and the political system. So this is, this is really complicated uh, to deal with. Uh, and uh, I'm, I've, I have been uh, surprised by how many of my friends, for example, not only on, in the libertarian movement, but friends in general, are completely opposed uh, to root for the, the Brazilian team that we call Seleção, uh, because they understand that that might uh, benefit the, uh, the political system or the president, because you know that we have elections in October. So this is all very confusing because I don't really think there is that much of a, of a link uh, between how uh, the Brazilian team does in the World Cup and uh, the willingness to uh, still support uh, the uh, incumbent president. That seems incredible uh, that people would put aside how soccer mad they are. Uh, is, is President Rousseff, is she... Uh, directly identified with the World Cup? Is she someone who championed bringing it to Brazil? Yes, yeah, she, uh, yeah, she decided to uh, uh, champion it. Actually, the president before her, uh, Lula, who was very uh, popular and uh, who uh, is a close friend in the same party. Uh, so she is completely identified with the, uh, with the World Cup in the sense, not, not the Brazilian team itself, but of course, the, uh, let's say, the organization of the uh, infrastructure and the World Cup in general. So definitely she is uh, uh, related and, and, uh, uh, to, to the World Cup. Uh, but I think uh, the, th the two things uh, might be viewed as separate, you know, uh, the success or failure of the Brazilian team and whatever happens uh, with uh, the peaceful uh, rooting for your own team during the World Cup and how the infrastructure deals with the tourists here. So, uh, but it, but for whatever reason, these two are mixed up 
completely. So people are generally uh, not rooting for Brazil. We don't see, it's amazing that uh, at this point in time, in the past World Cups, not in Brazil, we always had the streets covered with uh, flags and banners and the asphalt uh, painted in green and yellow all over Brazil. And, and we don't have that uh, now. It's, a, it's amazing. It's shocking for me to uh, witness that. Well, that is shocking because certainly Americans have a perception of Brazil as soccer mad, as we call it. Uh, the, the price tag I've seen attached to bringing the World Cup to, to Brazil is about $11.5 billion. Uh, obviously, the 2016 Olympics are coming up. Also in Brazil, the, uh, the recent games in Sochi in the Soviet, former Soviet Union, uh, the price tag there was about $50 billion U.S. dollars. So uh, it's interesting to me uh, to see, at least in the U.S. press, so much coverage of uh, awareness in Brazil of the cronyism in these uh, sort of globalist type events. Yes. Uh, of course, you understand the protests are based uh, on a, a correct perception that, you know, the services that we get in Brazil for education and health, uh, public education and health, because we also have a vibrant, uh, vibrant uh, private education and private health uh, services. But you know, uh, the 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 average Brazilian, the poor Brazilian, has to deal with the public education and public health. Uh, the correct perception that those services are completely bad and people die the whole time in in the, in the hospitals and education it re really is uh, you know no education at all basically uh, so of course there is uh, the frustration uh, with that and people are saying why should we uh, as a people as the government uh, uh, taking uh, uh, you know taxpayers money to invest in the world cup uh, and not uh, invest in in more uh, hospitals and uh, and uh, education. Of course, we as libertarians understand the the complexity of uh, having the government do th those services. But basically, we have in Brazil may, uh, mainly fifty percent think the World Cup is good because we'll have more investments, more consumption, <laughs> and more visibility for Brazil. And fifty percent consider it bad. Uh, because of this problem that I just mentioned with the uh, with the public services, uh, so that's that's uh, the uh, frustration. These fifty percent that I think it is bad, uh, you know, they are carried it through uh, to the streets and are uh, and uh, plan to uh, make uh, demonstrations and protests uh, all over Brazil, and they're trying to do that, but. You know, Jeff, I don't think this is going to be a real problem. You know, the government, of course, understand that this is a, a, a central issue uh, for the success and the peaceful uh, um, um, event that uh, all Brazilians should uh, uh, want to have. So they are going to be uh, up, uh, up uh, to speed uh, with trying to avoid that. And in fact, I've heard that uh, uh, some libertarians that went to the last year's Confederations Cup uh, uh, protests, J they were just there. They were not leaders or, or anything. They were uh, being summoned and interrogated by the federal police a couple of times, uh, uh, and the federal police wants to intimidate them, uh, not for them to get involved in further uh, protests. So in, in general, I think we're not going to have uh, uh, big problems as far as uh, um, you know, protests or violent protests and, and demonstrations. Shifting gears a little bit in terms of perception, uh, I'd love to talk to you a bit about Brazilian libertarianism. Now, when you found not long after you founded Mises Brazil, uh, you were actually up here in Auburn and you gave a speech entitled Starfish and the Spider. And we've got it on our website at Mises.org. I'd encourage anybody to look at it because it's a great speech. And you talked, among other things in that speech, about sort of conceptual tactics for libertarians. And one of your messages was hey, you know, libertarianism means different things to different people and different cultures, and it ought to be couched and sold as such. In other words, is there sort of a Brazilian flavor to liberty that's, that's not like the American or Western-centric flavor of liberty? I would say uh, that Brazilians are uh, more pragmatic, uh, and uh, so they will tend to value a little bit more than the U.S. the consequentialist approach 
rather than the uh, deontological approach or the uh, let's say the natural law approach or or objectivist approach so brazilians tend to be a little bit more uh, pragmatic in that sense and i think then in brazil the consequentialist approach has a little bit more uh, um um, more of you know advantage to pursue that um uh, so yeah we need to localize uh, uh the uh, the approaches but of course what we do at Mis mrs brazil and, and we have been uh, very successful i would guess for the time we've been around is to use uh, the mrs institute as a benchmark uh, and not try to reinvent things and and that is i i think uh, the main uh, uh, the, was the key for the uh, the um, the success that we we've had uh, recently to have the Mises Institute as a model. Uh, so um, I, that's uh, that's how I view uh, the movement in Brazil. It's going very well. We have uh, now it's amazing. We have maybe uh, twenty institutes or organized uh, uh, um, you know organizations uh, promoting liberty in brazil only in brazil so it's amazing what's going on here of course we're still small but uh, i think we're doing the right stuff here well elia when you talk about a more pragmatic approach to bringing people to liberty as an outsider i look at a country like brazil obviously very rich in resources uh very tons of natural beauty uh, this incredible physical culture, you know, football and outdoors and beach life and Gracie Jiu Jitsu and beautiful weather and, and all these things that Americans sort of think of when they think of Brazil. But we also think of like a, you know, a, a, almost a sprawling mega city of Sao Paulo that becomes almost unworkable. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, some extreme wealth and some extreme poverty. We have that in the U.S. as well, of course. Uh, you know, and it seems to me that there are a lot of strong libertarian arguments uh, to fixing or at least ameliorating those those day to day practical problems like transport. You mentioned er when we were offline earlier, uh, you know, get, getting around, getting hotels uh, for for the World Cup. Those those are the kind of maybe practical areas where where liberty might be a good sell in a place like Brazil. It is. Uh, I still don't think we are there yet. Because in the last year's uh, demonstrations regarding transport, uh, you know, though we had the presence of libertarians uh, uh, arguing for private solutions, uh, in the end, uh, the voice that were stronger was, you know, we want uh, uh, free transportation. So <laughs> it's uh, it's still not time uh, for it yet. And I actually have been using, because of the World Cup, an analogy, if you allow me a few minutes, uh, the analogy uh, between the, uh, the libertarian movement and, and football and soccer and the World Cup is that we are competing against different teams. You know, the Keynesian team, the interventionist team, the Marxist uh, team. And uh, the analogy is as follows. Each team has its uh, goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper are the great minds uh, uh, that have been with us, for example, in our team, it would be Mises and Hayek. Uh, the defense would be the present day PhDs. They are actually in the academia and, and, and pursuing uh, uh, different ideas to, to, to market. The midfield would be the guys related to culture, uh, the writers, journalists, TV anchors and, and people like that. And the attack would be the politicians, you know, the politicians that wait, basically wait for the ball to get to their foot and they just push it in, inside the goal. The, uh, the coach uh, and the infrastructure of the club would be the think tanks like Mrs. Brazil. And of course, our competition also has, you know, their own, their own uh, teams and, and coaches and infrastructure. Uh, and of course, the crowd are the fans of our doctrine. I think we still don't have, you know, a good team because we have, you know, the best goalkeeper. We have some pretty good, pretty good infrastructure, uh, you know, the, the, the think tanks. Uh, defense is still lacking, I would say, in the libertarian movement. We don't have many uh, PhDs in the academia in Brazil. Still, we have maybe four or five Austrian professors in the academia in Brazil, which is uh, Marxist dominated, uh, amazingly, not neoclassical. In Brazil, it's Marxist. Uh, and, and the midfield, we are starting to have some very good writers and journalists and TV anchors. So we, we still, we have a, a good, uh, a good uh, midfield. We don't, we still are not there uh, to get the ball to the attackers 
to the politicians to make changes in the law that w- would impact uh, the system in our favor. Whereas we, of course, we are not in the generation that will implement anarcho-capitalism. So, so everything that we uh, uh, want to have implemented would have to go through the democratic uh, process, but still we don't have a full-fledged team that would, would uh, allow politicians to uh, capitalize and implement that. Of course, you know, politicians, I say, are the, uh, the animal with the best nose, nose, the best olfactory organ. They always know what people want. So when we have a good team, uh, then, you know, there are going to be a lot of politicians say they were libertarians since they were little kids and they will be willing to push that ball into the goal. But it's not yet time. We have to be patient. There are no shortcuts and we have to be patient. I think in one, two, three generations, we'll be able to do it. But still, unfortunately, we're not there yet. Elio, when you talk about patience, I think that the lesson here is that liberty is is a long game, right? I mean, uh, um, we've we've lost our freedoms some sometimes gradually, sometimes quickly, but uh, um, the process of getting them back is is not always easy, and it's something I think we all have to be invested in. And, and in part, that means doing the hard work of organizing and educating folks. And for that, we are all very grateful that you uh, have, have spent so much of your own time and some of of your own energy in not only creating Mises Brazil, but really in being a a, a very well-known and very well-thought-of Austro-Libertarian around the world. And folks, with that, we will leave it, and we'd love to talk to Elio again sometime. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Jeff.